Hello everybody. Um, today we are, we're down in the basement shop and we are going to be working on rebuilding this Manitou 2 fork. So um, this is going to go on my Kirk Revolution. Um, the fork that's on there right now, the steer tube is too short. And so we're going to rebuild this. Um, as you can see it's collapsed right now um, and stuck. So could be a bit of a big project but never done this before so you might as well start with one that's going to be difficult because you know what else are you going to do um so i'm just going to start taking it apart um obviously the brakes need to come off and etc etc and um we're going to be laying out the parts here i got some rags so nothing rolls away and we're going to see what happens um i do have my computer down here so I can put some videos on of other people taking one of these part. I believe Butter Suspension has a video. So I'm gonna pull that up, watch um, it quick, and then get started on this and um, film the whole process of a beginner doing this um, and what struggles I bump into. So we're just gonna start with the basics, taking the brakes off. So then, <laughs> The next step, we're going to take the uh, uh, brace off. Oh, that's got to be a good sign. They do move. That's exciting. So we're just loosening these up. Got all these bolts loose. And it just pulled it out. So we got the steer, the crown off. So we're going to set that over here. So we have our four bolts for the brace we have this. now we got two fork legs okay so the next step is just to pry off these top caps okay so we got the cap off okay so we have got the caps off so we just have the fork legs deep down in there is a five mil Allen. So you're gonna need a, a socket um, Allen wrench. Uh, and then if you're like me, you're gonna need to cobble together all of your extensions to be able to reach down there. Kidding. The tool in there is by far the hardest part. So then I just was able to grab we're gonna see if we can just grab this end. Yep. And then, to make this quicker, I have this cool um, tool my grandpa made me, which is just, just a long socket extension with a handle. Put that uh, bend on there. Gonna turn out that uh, that's true. A bolt. So I'm not really sure when. Okay, so once it's loose, it's just gonna pull apart. And there's that's what was in there. So there's the five mil. So that was in there. We're gonna need to clean that end. Okay, so now we're just gonna take this apart and see what's going on in here. Okay, let me get that part out. Okay. 
Okay, we got a big old chunk of shredded rod. Fits in the hole. Hey, there are our elastomers. Look at that. We found them. I knew they were in there somewhere. Ooh. Yep. That's uh So that that's the piece we're gonna need. So there's a piece we're gonna need. That's a piece we need. Threaded rod again. Mop. Yeah, the other half is just gone. It's just gone. More to be found. Put that there to separate. The last ones weren't supposed to be down on this thing. This is the whole melting, coagulating, getting all over this. Because um, when this screw is tightened, this is supposed to push up on the elastomers um, and, and make the preload um, adjustment. Uh, so just got to get this all clean and um, then we'll start the put together process. So we got to do a little bit of cleaning. Um, I find um, for the bolts and such, just going around and using a razor blade, the more, majority of the gunk off works the best. Same with the washers, you can just cut it all off. Now, um, the uh, diagrams for all these forks are found online. I'll put a link below the video to the website that has the diagram. So if you're rebuilding one, you can look at the diagram to make sure you get the elastomers in the right order. But um, it is fairly straightforward. Um, most likely, when you pull it apart, there's a good chance your elastomers are going to be all melted, which was the case in these elastomers. So the order may not be um, visible from taking it apart. But um, once you look at the uh, diagram, it's pretty straightforward on how everything goes back together. Right clean actually works really well. Okay, so I'm just gonna have to go grab a wrench because I wanna thread this back in so that it looks like this one for assembly. Uh, it'll just be easier. So I'll go do that. And then you also want to make sure to clean inside the two all of the tubes. So in this one, I can see where the um, elastomer um, liquefied and then um, hardened. Um, so getting something that's long enough to get in there to scrape, to scrape it out, um, a screwdriver or um, something of that nature will help um, get all the residue out. Same with um, these these uh, lowers. So I just have a, a long metal rod that I'm using to get the old elastomers out of all of the cylinders. And uh, sprayed a little brake clean down in there to to loosen it up. See, um, I like to use something without a sharp edge, so I don't have to worry about marring the inside of anything. So, you know, a screwdriver would work, but you could put scratches into the insides, which with elastomers is probably not going to be the end of the world, but you know. Better just to not, not damage anything. 
Yeah, so we're just spinning the rag around in there, cleaning out the insides. So just any method you can really to get in there and and uh, clean those tubes out just so that all of your new stuff will slide in there nice and and easy is gonna you know simplify your day. Okay, so now we're ready to start putting in elastomers. So we need one lower, one upper, our washers, our bushing. Honestly, I don't know what this part is called. And the pieces to attach this piece to the to the lower. So looks like step one is we put this piece back in the fork. Okay. I bet if we screw this out, it'll make this process a lot easier because then we can grab this and um, get it in the holes. Yo. There we go. So when installing this part, you want to hold it up so you don't lose it while you push this cap on. Push that cap on, there'll be a little clip, clip, and then a little screw goes in. Difficult with the uh, slippery. Greasy fingers, and then that's a three mil Allen. We just tighten that up, and then obviously you don't need to hold it anymore. Tighten it up. And then we gotta remember to tighten this because we had we need to loosen this because we had tightened it to make it easier to install. So then it's done. Yeah, so we're gonna twist that back so it's shut because we want to have as much room as possible when we're putting the elastomers in. So let me get the elastomers prepped and I'll be right back. Okay, so the way the elastomers go is it's a big one, a washer, a big one, a washer, then um, a smaller one, a washer and the bushing. They're all going to go in the lower. And then the rod, the bolt, a washer, and the shortest one are going are gonna to be coming in from the upper. So these two will be in here. The bushing obviously goes right here. And then this stuff will be down in here not this because we already put but this is down here but it's already in the leg so this is for this side so that is the setup we have our SRAM butter so we're going to use that to grease everything up as we slide it in and then we're going to uh, move on to the next leg the sides the bottom just all the surfaces so we're doing this first time together. This the first time I've ever done this. So we know the short one goes on here. So we know that goes like that. So I'm assuming we do this step next. And we just... Shake her till she's on. And then the bushing. And then a washer. The short one, or the second shortest one. Another washer. 
the long one. Like so. Another washer. This is going to be interesting. We don't have any thread sticking out, so we're going to. Oh, yeah, so we're going to have to squish it to get threads out, but that's how it works. So there we are. We're going to grab our. We're going to put some. Put some on the, the upper so that this slides in nice. So you need to remove the bushing and the seal from here. Just use a, I used a razor blade, probably not the best idea, but those need to be removed. Then this will slide right in. Okay, yeah, so it goes in, you'll, you're going to put that bushing and seal in after. So now, we got to get that squished down. Put the tool in there until we can find our thing. And then this part, which needs to be the, oh yeah. We got it. So, I find our screw and then just press and tighten. Voila! Second leg together. Okay, so we have the fork put back together. Um, I didn't film the finishing of putting it together, but it's just like taking it apart. Once you have the uppers and in the, in the lowers, you can attach the, the, the brace and then the crown and then put the, uh, the caps in. Now there's some, some important numbers to be aware of. Um, you need to torque these bolts to 60 to 80 inch pounds um, and then the cinch bolts on the crown should be 90 to 110. Um, I will link the uh, diagram that has that information and kind of the exploded view of the order of the um, elastomers. And I also link um, uh, suspension fork parts, the website where you can get the elastomers. Um, this was a lot easier than I expected it to be. Um, as long as you have a long enough extension to reach the 5 mil bolt, that's really the only specialty tool you need, and, I, and a long extension isn't really that special, but you will need that tool that you may not have, but you can combine, obviously, shorter extensions to make a longer extension. Um, then it's just the process of cleaning the elastomers. I found brake clean to be the best um, solvent to make them easy to wipe up and then just scraping them clean um, did the job. Um, so now this is ready to go. I do need to wait for new seals, dust wipers, to come in. The old ones broke and I just couldn't get them back in. Um, so I would recommend if you are replacing the elastomers, you may as well just order, especially on a two, I haven't done any other ones so I don't know, but on a two I would just go ahead and order new seals also they are also you can get them from suspension fork parts um, in the next video we will be installing this onto the kirk revolution i'm really excited about that um, we have a bike swap that has a vintage bike show coming up in february and i want to bring this bike to it um, so i'm just excited to get this all finished and put together um, so you can look forward to that in the next video if you like this video um, like and subscribe for more um, we're going to be doing more builds, more fork um, rebuilds. Um, also, make sure to check out our website, um, Gringineer Cycles. We have tons of vintage bike parts. We'll be putting up rebuilt forks as we get them rebuilt. Um, have a great rest of your day.